We're going to begin our study of blood by looking at the red blood cell, also called the urethrocyte. These are very small cells with a biconcave disc shape. So if we break this down, bi means two, concave means like it's dented in. So if you can see here, it dents in, here it dents in. That's your biconcave. And then disc means that it's a flat circle. They also are technically not cells. The reason they're technically not cells is because they lack a nucleus. And one of the overriding themes in anatomy and physiology is that form follows function. So their form is to be this small biconcave disc with no nucleus. Their function is to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide and to fit through capillaries. Capillaries are very narrow, tiny blood vessels, and they're hard to get through. So they have to, red blood cells have to be able to fit through capillaries. So form follows function. So their form, their structure, goes along with their job. So we're going to break that down and look at it. If we look first at the delivering oxygen and carbon dioxide. Urethrocytes have hemoglobin. This is a protein molecule inside of them that binds oxygen and carbon dioxide. In fact, inside each one of these urethrocytes, there are about 280 million hemoglobin molecules. Each one combined either for oxygen or for carbon dioxides. The next feature that helps them to deliver these is the fact that they don't have a nucleus. So a nucleate means no nucleus. The nucleus is typically the largest structure in a cell. So the nucleus takes up a lot of room. When urethrocytes start out, they do have a nucleus, but as they mature, they lose it. And by losing their nucleus, they make more room for hemoglobin. So this maximizes the oxygen and carbon dioxide that they can carry. Another important feature is that they have no mitochondria. Let's think about this for a few minutes. Urethrocytes do not have mitochondria. Now they're still living and they still need energy, but they can make ATP by glycolysis, which doesn't use the mitochondria. Think about the significance of not having mitochondria and how that allows them to deliver more oxygen. Let's imagine for a moment your urethrocyte, which we can put RBC to abbreviate red blood cell, is like a pizza delivery guy.
the oxygen is the pizza, and your cells are the hungry customers. So you call up, you order a pizza to have delivered to your house. The pizza delivery guy is hungry. So as he's on his way to your house, he goes ahead and eats a couple slices of your pizza. So when you get your pizza delivered, there's some missing because he ate it. You probably would not like this. There'd probably be no tip and a phone call to the pizza place. It's the same idea here with your red blood cells in delivering oxygen. Their job is to deliver oxygen to your cells. Not use it themselves. Well, if you think back to chapter three and what you learned about cellular respiration, the mitochondria is what uses oxygen. Glycolysis takes place outside the mitochondria and does not use oxygen. The mitochondria with the Krebs cycle and electron transport is where oxygen is consumed. So if you take away the mitochondria, then it becomes impossible for the cell to use oxygen. So the significance of not having mitochondria means that they can't use oxygen. This way, they instead carry it and give it to other cells. And a fourth feature that goes along with delivering more oxygen is the shape, the biconcave disc. If we come back up here and look at the picture, notice how it's kind of flat. You've got oxygen in here. It has to get out, it has to get in. It has to get in and out quickly. Imagine instead if you had a sphere, if you had a cell that was like a basketball the oxygen would have further to go to get in or out. By having this thin, flat cell, the oxygen doesn't have very far to get to a surface. There's always a surface to get in and out through nearby. So the biconcave disc allows for faster diffusion in and out. So it's quick for the oxygen to diffuse in, to diffuse out, as opposed to if the cell were spherical. Okay. Our other feature is, our other function is that they have to fit through capillaries. So let's look at how they fit through capillaries. So for one, they are very small. We mentioned this before. Red blood cells are 7.5 micrometers. To give you a comparison, a typical cell in your body is about 30 micrometers. So they're much smaller. They're one of the smallest cells you have. This obviously helps them fit through small, narrow capillaries. That biconcave disc, again, is an important feature. This allows them to form a roulette. Take a look in your book. There's a photograph of this in chapter 18. This is where the red blood cells stack on top of each other kind of like a stack of coins. This way they can squeeze through the capillary without getting tangled up with each other. Okay. 
And then finally, they fit through the capillary with the help of spectrin. Spectrin is the protein that makes their framework. This protein is very flexible. So imagine like the two by fours in a building, they form the framework. Imagine if they were bendy and flexible and you could bend that structure. That's what it's like with your red blood cells. This allows them to bend in order to squeeze through the capillaries. All right, so there are the main features of a red blood cell and how those features help it do its job.